This episode of a Skyrim Addict podcast is brought to you by the Fallout Feed and the Fallout Feed Roundtable only at asapodcasting.com and by listeners like you. Where's all my dragon friends? They're all fucked off. They're all dead. There's dragon mounds everywhere. Who's rapping? Over keen. Dragons are not over keen. I'll dice them like a knife, slicing right through an aubergine. My dragon shelf flow is sweeter than a soda stream. You won't believe your eyes. I'm like an overload of dopamine. A broadsword in one hand and a magic spell in the other. I'm the last of the dragonborn. There's no other, my brother, to run for cover. If you've got scales, then I'm on your tail and I will not Welcome to the 42nd edition of a Skyrim Addict Podcast Roundtable. It's the third... Yeah! The 13th episode it's of so sad, it's the last six. one. Yeah. Season six finale, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for everyone for joining us. All the people hanging out on YouTube live. We appreciate the support and the chit chat. It's all oh, so good stuff. Uh, if you had forgotten, we are the show who compares and contrasts Skyrim experiences through a lively roundtable discussion by playing through the same quest with characters who have been randomly assigned drastically different attributes. Welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. Season 6 hello. finale, Skyrim Special Edition. Tonight, we are joined by our uh, usual crew, uh, Jeremy. Hi, Jeremy. How are you doing tonight? Good. How's everyone doing? Uh, wonderful. Thanks for being here. And Colin. Hi, Colin. I'm feeling good. Great, great. Glad, to, be, glad to have you here. And Michael. Hello, Michael. Hello, hello. How's it going? Uh, Pat, hi Pat. Hey, 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 how we doing? Victor, howdy. Howdy, howdy. And uh, we will be going through the quest this evening that will finish the main quest of uh, you know the dragon one. I, I guess there technically are two main quests in Skyrim, being the uh, the civil war and the dragon. But I always consider the dragon one to be the actual real main quest. Uh, am, am, am I biased in that? Do you guys put the same weight in the Civil War as you do the dragons? No, I think it is the main quest. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. definitely agree. So uh, this will bring conclusion to the main quest of uh, Skyrim Special Edition. It's been wonderful to revisit the game through the lens of being re-released with some new graphics, with some patches to stuff. Uh, evidently, things are supposed to be working better and everything. The experience in general, uh, we'll get into, especially as we talk about the quest uh, uh they they did a beautiful job, and I, I it's been a lot of fun uh, coming back to the game and, and revisiting through um, some different uh, different angles. Uh, new, I don't know. It was just a smoother experience in general. I got a lot less uh, glitching and crashing and stuff. So it was, it was experience uh, that I I really enjoyed going through. Um, so if you'd like to get into our character introductions, how we started out, uh, where we thought our characters would go, where they ended up. Uh, and sort of um, our differences between how we would normally play the game and what the round table is forcing us out of our our comfort zone. Uh, go ahead and refer back to our previous episode, uh, episode 12, and you will hear uh, a lot of our character introductions. Uh, so this episode, however, we will go ahead and cover the last three quests of the main uh, story there, uh, World Eaters, Irie, Sovngarde, and Dragon Slayer. Um, so, as a healer, uh, it is uh, uh, Restoration was one of my assigned um, schools. As a healer, I had a, a wonderful time playing the game. Everyone uh, loves to give me a hard time about how I uh, will unashamedly just remove uh, people from their, their their lives and never let them return. Loved one. <laughs> they never get to see their loved ones ever again. Uh, but I do love to collect uh, followers in games. That is one of my favorite things to do. So I thought as uh, through the Restoration School, it would be fun just to have as big of a warring party as possible, just bring everyone along. And uh, so I would get quest followers. I would I would uh, get normal followers. I would get, you know, Serana from Dawnguard and whoever, whoever I could find. I would, I would bring them along and just heal them as they fought and use heal other with uh, through the apocalypse mod would allow me to do damage to enemies. So it's it a very fun way to play. I've never played that style before. Lots of fun. Um, but 
um, when you get into these quests, uh, some of them take away your followers, and that made me super weak. So I had lots of trouble with a lot of these quests, but uh, we might as well go ahead and start uh, launching right into them. Jeremy, of course, did not get to this point because his character died long ago. R.I.P. Nadsler. Uh, but maybe Pat, would you like to um, describe to us just uh, first of all where we left off? Uh, since we haven't talked about um, questing in a while, uh, where where were we before we get into World Eaters Irie and um, what what is uh, so, what what, so what is going we, on there? I think we had just uh, we had Oda being uh, you know uh, subject to proctological exams by Bar and Gar up on the porch uh, <laughs> in uh, in White Run. Um, so um, I think you had the, that was a key thing is to, to stop subjecting him to the indignity of being examined by Berengar. Uh, you uh, maybe well, had you know, once scene. you reach a certain age, Pat, you, you need to have it done regularly. <laughs> Oda being has to turn his head and cough. That's right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, so uh, and then we also had to do the season unending. If you hadn't done Civil War, which I think about half of us had done, and then you had to make a decision about whether you're going to bother Parthenax or not. Um, a couple of us uh, did the shameful deed and. Uh, Squish the old worm, and I think most of us, uh, <laughs> most of us, uh, just ignored the stupid blades. <laughs> Squish the old worm. No, well, he was, he was, a, tre- he was a, tre- he was a treacherous old thing. You couldn't be trusted anyway. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so I think at that point, once all that business is done, you uh, just when you're ready to go, you just hop on Oda being, and uh, as you said, he uh, he doesn't doesn't tr- trot along any of your followers. So it's just you and a big old dragon flying off to uh, the uh, to school dolphin, right? Did uh, you play around with Odaving at all with his? What is his shout? Is it call dragon? Is it something that simple? Call summon dragon or call dra- call dragon? I call think. dragon. Yeah. Yeah. Did you and play around with being... that before going to uh, school? Do- school dolphin? Is that is it possible? Well, that... I mean, as soon as you let him go, he he takes you straight there, right? I don't, okay. I don't think there's any choice in the matter. It must be when you get back that you can. Uh, mm-hmm. Still use Odaving. Okay. Yes. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Um, and any anyone here on the show, please uh, feel free to jump in at any time if you have anything you'd, you'd like to add to to Pat's adventure here. But uh, sorry, I interrupted Pat. No, no. It's, I thought uh, it's called often. I, I wasn't expecting it to be just kind of a a dungeon crawl sort of thing. I mean, it was a good one. I liked it. It's fun. You know, nice. You know, the Draugr, the Death Lords, and the level I was playing through, they were all Death Lords. Um, uh, death lords and and, and relatively high level Draugr. You know, so yeah, it's always fun. You know, uh, sneaky arching against Draugr is, is is a lot of fun. So I I was actually expecting it to be somehow more, almost more like Sovngarde, I guess. You know, I, I guess no Skuldafen is it's in the regular world, but it's just inaccessible, right? Mm-hmm. It's just up well, in the sort of mountains, Alduin's, right? Sort of place right but it, but it's in but it's implied. in there's the there's the portal at the end that takes you to sovereign guard but Skuldafen itself is supposed to be in skyrim somewhere mm-hmm. right yeah, that's yeah his, he's, his he refers portal. to where it is it's located to the east far to the east somewhere the yarl like mountains or whatever yeah so I, I i didn't i didn't make that connection i was picturing it more like it off in some mystical realm or something but once i got there i mean it all made sense because you, you you were sort of fighting through to the to the to the portal at the end of the one uh uh, dragon priest was guarding so uh so yeah i mean i, I obviously uh those of you guys who have played it multiple times probably remember a lot more specifics about it but i i i thought it was a good a good dungeon crawl it was a good worthy uh uh you know fight to to, to get through and um you know i was definitely a little bit worried that i hadn't tooled up enough in terms of you know potions and and uh and, you know and, and good arrows and everything else uh you know because it uh it, it it took a while, it, you know, because you know, you're going by yourself, right? So it it, it took a lot of yeah. took a lot of potions, took a lot of arrows to get through all those dragon lords and uh, and, the, and the dragon priests at the end. The the dragon priest at the end, um, Nakreen, I'm I think that might be his name. Was that your last dragon priest mask that you had to get, Pat? Did you had you been collecting I, I all did of them not, up to that point? I I was not obsessively collecting dragon priest masks. I have a bunch of them, but I by no means have them all. Collect them all, Pat. Collect them all. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing. I, I need. I I should I should do that now because I've got probably. Although I've got I've got the shit scattered over so many different houses, I, I don't know where the fuck anything is. Oh yeah, that's that's the problem with owning all the. Properties. I can barely keep track of my children and spouse. You know? yeah. yeah. What What are these special items in the game that you absolutely have to know 
where they are that you that you would not just you know lackadaisically store in this house or that house or here and there you know what i mean what what items did you guys absolutely have to know at all times where they are by smithing an alchemy gear yeah 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 yeah, that was that's, that was the one thing I was really careful it. with. Yeah, because <laughs> that's about it. That's about yeah. it. And then you were then you guys don't really have a, a home base other than that. You f- you felt free to store stuff everywhere or just sell everything possible. I, I had way too much crap to sell. I I, yeah. I could not possibly have sold it, between. I mean, I had I counted. I had like five hundred thousand worth of septums worth of potions just, in one barrel. Oh, good lord! Just because I was grinding so much alchemy and. Yeah. I, I don't remember. Did the special edition of Skyrim add categories to containers, or do you still have to store everything in different? Because I still, out of habit, just stored everything in different containers. But one of the advances that I thought was great about Fallout is that each container had you could categorize to filter through by mm, type. Can yeah. you do that in in the special edition that, of Skyrim? Did they add no, that? It's not. Oh, that no. sucks. Okay. Yeah, I, I yeah, just so just out of habit, I add everything to different containers anyway. Yeah, in, in Fallout, I think it's actually once I realized it was nicely categorized, I just started putting everything in the workbench. And I think maybe yeah, Colin or Victor, well, I think one of you guys mentioned that as you collect a lot of crap in containers, that could actually slow your game down. So I think that actually has helped speed my games up in Fallout. It's just put everything in the workbench yep, rather than yep, a separate yep. container. And try not to store stuff, try to sell stuff as much as possible. But yeah, you're right, Pat. Sometimes you get to a point where it's just impossible. Well, I, have, I was grinding both alchemy and enchantment, yeah. and I just had just, way, way, way too much crap to sell. There's not enough money in the economy. To, <laughs> no, that, yeah, I was I was gradually turning the, the economy into one of you know, based solely on potions and like enchanted. You know, there, were, there was no gold in circulation. It was all, it was all potions. Yeah. Um. So we're at the World Eaters, Iri, uh, Odevangs and his yolks. <laughs> yolks. <laughs> Remember we went over that again and again. Uh, so we set him free. He's taken us to um, School Dolphin. You ran... How, how are you taking care of guys? Uh, sneaky archery, you said, mostly? Pretty much. Yeah. Um, okay. Michael, what are you doing through School Dolphin? I used uh I didn't sneak really much at all. I mean I snuck some, but uh not not an excessive amount. Um used it's, the... it's kinda hard to sneak because everyone's sort of perched above you as you approach yeah, the stuff. You're you know? really high sneak level. Well I had invisibility and other oh, stuff. Okay, yeah. But um before you go into the into the temple itself, yeah, it's hard to sneak out yeah. there because yeah. And... They do they do tend to see you outside because they have a high vantage point. And there's but... at least one if not two Level dragons right when you show up, right? Well, there's one, and then there's two perched up top. Up top, okay, but, yeah. yeah. But, no, yeah. There's, there's there's two you fight. Uh, you, one you get in attacks you straight away. Yeah. And then when you get in closer, another one attacks you by the... What is it? Uh, oh, you're right. There's four total. Yeah. yeah. And then there's two up by the dragon priest, but they, they won't attack you. Yeah, unless you attack them. Yeah, they just sit there and laugh. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, it's really hard to sneak if you have a giant glowing ball of light surrounding you. <laughs> <laughs> but true. you do look awesome. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, all joking aside, the that does alert them. I'm assuming, Colin. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Charging in there, blasting vampires, bane them from the other side, <laughs> which is an exploding ball of light. So you're a giant ball of light. You're using balls of exploding light when, yeah they kind of know you there when yeah. when you uploaded your video a little while ago colin uh you were you had the big ball of light around you and it looked like you were casting a ward to prevent uh, the dragon priest from throwing magic your direction but it also looked like you were casting something towards him that was like a pulsating like a vroom, vroom, vroom sort of that, that's the um apocalypse added master level spell for restoration uh there's a couple in now uh, but that one was uh, Meridia's Wrath. Oh, nice! And it's a it's a 
massive spell. Literally, in, in drink, it, it comes out as you said, as those pulses flying across. And you can actually do a dual wield, but I had to. I could only single cast it because I needed to keep the ward up because they had like really badass shouts. And obviously, the dragon priest has got had like thunder strike. I think he had, which uh, hurts like the Dickens. So yeah, you're gonna, gonna, <laughs> you gotta keep your watch ward out up. for that. Yeah. So. But yeah, Meridia's Wrath is um, is one of the master level spells where you dual cast it, and once you cast it, then it equips a special spell, a different spell. So you cast Meridia's Wrath, and then it equips a different spell, and that different spell, which I can't remember the name of, my apologies, check the mod page, it'll be there, and uh, then you cast that spell, and it lasts, if you single cast it, um, was it, it lasts for 30 seconds if you dual cast it it lasts for a minute and it literally like you know it wipes on dead uh but the only things that are really tough enough are the droga death lords and they'll take a good so sort of like you'll have to do a, a good like minute long stream of that damage to be able to kill them whereas if it's um was it a droga or a restless droga it'll wipe them in at about 2 3 seconds oh that's very interesting i have a similar, similar experience that uh, we'll, we'll get into a little bit um, when I uh, talk about my skull dolphin a little bit. Uh, Victor, what are you uh, getting into when you show up here? <laughs> well, mostly mostly archery, uh, and I have my my conjured hern, who is also an archer. So uh, we we pretty much sort of uh, uh, leapfrogged our way up through uh, the outer areas of of uh, skull dolphin. Um, you know, mm-hmm. taking as, as many, uh, hiding, not sneaking too much, but hiding in, in, in little, you know, spots underneath arches and things like that, where they can't get at you and, yeah. and popping out. And, what and what kind of, what kind of bow are you using at this point? I'm still using the bound bow. Uh, it's bound bow. level 34. So it's still, mm-hmm. it's still a reasonable alternative. I, I, I managed, I made sure that I, I brought a lot of, uh, arrows with me in case I needed to shift over to a, to a real bow. But I never felt really felt the need. Um, I was able to take most of them out. At what point? Uh, where's the threshold that the bound bow becomes? Beats the hell out of me. I, somewhere above that, uh, I think it's yeah. it's a, it's yeah. a daedric. It's basic. Da- it's a base daedric bow. So uh, yeah, probably damage level around damage level between twenty five and thirty two or so of of bows in general. I think, and and once you get above that, um, then you'll want a real bow mm-hmm. smithed up yeah it, I, I definitely agree it's higher than 35 40 level it's you know, 50 plus level of the character or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. something like that uh, depending on your smithing level right i mean yeah I guess, right yeah. right oh, so, so the bound bow is dependent upon your smithing or no 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 the bow that you no, switch no, to the yeah, bow you switch to okay, you make. yeah um, like, so you, yeah. if you have a dragon yeah. bone or yeah, or, yeah. or see, see, bow see. Or, or like a really good ebony, then it's probably going to be better. But what? anything less than that, or unless you want like Orioles bow or something for a special purpose. But also, it, 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 it's using something like Ordinator, which has some really well developed perks. Which, I, of course, I don't have the the thing uh, in front of me right now. But I had the. I mean, I was at Conjuration level eighty four. I had taken a numerous Ordinator perks that are all. Uh, directed towards conjured weapons so it's fairly powerful bow when when you take all those perks yeah good point yeah because all, all you get in the base game is soul trap right something like yeah. that yeah. yeah i mean you get you get you, there's, part, a, there's that's part of ordinator too but but yeah mm, right 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 trap. i'm sure ordinary's got that and more but yeah you, yeah. you only the, the, the really the only trick you can add other than increased damage is uh, soul trap I think. yeah um, and banish oh that's that's right that's right you can't do the banish yeah yeah. I, I think it's and I kind of I think it's a pretty high banish level, right? Um, I think it banishes pretty tough critters. Yeah, and yeah. My her, my hern was fairly fairly strong too because I had a couple of perks uh, in you know related to conjuring Dremor or whatever he's classified as. Um, yeah, uh, he, he he's kind of he's a, a tiny tiny bit in ESO. Um, they're kind of like a, like a, a miniature cider or something like that. Yeah, something like I, I, yeah. I saw something some ESO link when I was searching for what a hern is, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're they're. Um... But that's how I made it up 
through through that part and and pretty much through the temple as well it's it's and and i, I agree it's a, it's a nice sort of dungeon romp it's there's a couple of simple puzzles in there and and uh, nothing nothing too drastic i always feel like it's longer than i remember it, it yeah me oh, too I yeah i was just about to say that michael <laughs> yeah yeah, I feel like yeah. You feel like you get up those steps. You're like, oh, I'm through it, and then you go inside, and you're like, wow, this is way longer. Oh, than man, I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 uh, I mean, not to jump ahead, but you know, like Sovngarde is almost maybe shorter, right? Because there's yeah. Like, yeah. there's like a lot of talking, and then like, oh, the battle was pretty quick. <laughs> Well, after well, you... I, you know, my memory compresses, I actually, I actually got up to the top of the stairs in front of the door to Skaldafen Temple, and I thought, wait a minute, don't, isn't isn't the dragon priest on the outside? And I went, I went looking around the corner to see if he was over there. I thought, oh yeah. no, I got to go through the whole oh, thing. Oh no, stupid yeah. temple! And yeah. and then once you go inside, you think you're in the temple, but you find a door inside the temple that is labeled Skaldafen Temple. You're like, wait a second, I thought I was already in the temple. There's like yeah. a subsection yeah. in the temple labeled yeah. the temple, and that. that that's really common in uh, Skyrim. There's a lot of Skyrim dungeons like that where you'll go through like you know the the antechamber or yeah, whatever. The and like the, the third period. door you cross is is the one that's actually the named yeah, location. Yeah. yeah, it's the worst in the in the dwarven in the Dwemer ruins. Oh god, oh, god. yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, what what the hell's in the monkulari? <laughs> <laughs> That classic uh, education not working for you now, every time. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is play enough D and D, and you'll you'll pick it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking made up word. No, it's not. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. It was made up in the 11th century. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think all it. words are made up. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. My point. Yeah. 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 Well, they're dead, so who's laughing now? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure they're dead. I, I would hope. Boy, geez. Or we'd have other problems on our hands. Yeah. yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> uh, Michael, we had uh, briefly talked about your getting up the steps there was there i, I think i also cut you off there was, was there anything uh, else you were, uh, you were mentioning a mix of archery and runes and conjuration Man, um, i've never used runes did you did you enjoy your rune playthrough very much yeah ordinator made it much more uh usable i guess mm-hmm. you could say uh much, much more functional anyway so <laughs> there's that uh, but yeah no it's uh it's interesting um the slow. I took the perk that did slow damage over time as opposed to uh, immediate damage, and that can be problematic when you're going through uh, the temple. Yeah, there. But, yeah. Uh, he was like, you know, "Get off you, my heels." <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean the uh, the damage what compounds as you as they hit more runes, so they they lose their health faster, but they're still coming at you. So yeah. <laughs> there is yeah. that negative. So. It's a it's a that's, delicate balance. Yeah, that's interesting. That's one playstyle I've I've still yet to try in Skyrim. I've never done, you know, basically like mines. You know, yeah, magic, the basic runes are pretty fun. Yeah. Even just in the vanilla oh, yeah. game, it's yeah, yeah. You can only do one, so it's it's a lot more limited. But, uh, but so yeah. yeah, what is how does how did the ordinator expand runes for your enjoyment? Um, you can just uh, it just expands how many you can use at once uh things like that so it up makes to it more five viable. or seven or so yeah yeah whereas opposed to uh it's based on how much magic that you have i think oh but, okay um, okay yeah that makes sense yeah. as opposed to the vanilla game i think you can do two at once is the most right you I'm probably have to take a perk to do that right yeah yeah and then you get the greater distance as well with the perk um, mm, nice. the vanilla game is just one are you sure you can, you, you can double cast it, but I'm pretty sure it's just one. Huh. Now, now maybe you could do a lightning and a fire both or something, but I, 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 I would, right. I would, I would use fire runes to, um, to, to smoke out draugers. Yeah, you know, they were still in their coffins. You know, or still sleeping. Oh, that's um, what it's great for. Yeah, 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 great for that. Yeah. So, yeah. okay, tell me how to do that. What, what do you do when they're you, sleeping? You just, you just sneak up to a sleeping feet? draugr and. Um, before they wake up, you could actually do it while they're in there, like yeah. you're getting out of the coffin and or getting out of the alcove animation. You you just lay a you just lay a rune right on their coffin or right on their their alcove or whatever, and it'll 
I, I don't know if it's an insta, always an insta kill, but I never saw it fail. Um, and, and they, mm-hmm. they it gets nice. them, yeah, so, so it's it's basically sneaky destruction. Incredible, very nice. Um, don't stand too close. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, can you set off your own runes? Can you explode um, yourself? You you don't. But if somebody else sets it off while you're in the blast radius, it'll still damage you. Yes, they will. Oh wow, interesting. So that could be a pain in the ass. I'd blow myself up more times than uh, hurt other people. I guarantee you. Uh, maybe that's something I was, I'll, I'll revisit next time. I Just pop ask in Just ask who? Or Arthur. <laughs> Poor Arthur blowing up limbs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pulled his head. Uh, so when I showed up to Sovngarde, uh not Sovngarde, sorry, um, Skuldolfin, it was uh, brutal from the get-go. I was like, oh no, where is everyone? Every, everyone left me behind. And I had almost no worthwhile... Uh, you know, attack methods. I had a little bit of one-handed, but the, the, the most damage I had was an orcish mace, and it wasn't doing a ton of damage. It, it had the soul, the fiery soul trap enchantment on it, so it had a little bit of extra fire damage, but it still wasn't enough to blast Draugr Death Lords in the face. You know, I, I had some of the level lower level two. There were some scourges who were, um, uh, you know, they had bows and arrows, and they were hopping around uh those i didn't have as much trouble with i could whack those a few times with my orcish mace and do some damage to them but even a no-named base level just dragon level dragon level zero dragon was very problematic to me like this whole game i had no trouble with dragons because i could sick like four or five people on them at once and i could lay back and toss my restoration spells at people and I can never tell if the restoration spells ever did damage to dragons. I don't think they did. I think they would resist all that sort of stuff anyhow. Uh, but th- it was just, I would hide under that bridge, and I would run back and forth, and I would be healing myself with one hand, just constantly throwing, uh, healing with one hand, and trying, uh, let's see, I would do, like, um, a dragon rent to try to make it land, and then I would uh, run over to it, uh, tried to whack it a few times with an orcish mace, which wouldn't do all that much damage to it. Then it would up and fly away, blast me with fire, and it would take about 90% of my health away, then have to run under the damn bridge again and use healing and just sort of hide and wait for everything to calm down. You know, that takes like a full 30, 45 seconds. Then you run back out again, and you go with this loop over and over and over again until I just kept dying and dying and dying. And I was like, oh, fuck this. This sucks. So I went and I complained to you guys. I was like, somebody help. Give me a suggestion. What can I do? They took away my warring party and as a uh, a healer that leaves me pretty naked out there and so victor said oh wait you can try this what was it called victor it wasn't necromage but it was something like that it's a uh, necro plague i believe is the name ne- necro plague yeah. uh, but in the um apocalypse uh, tree for um for uh, the restoration school uh there was because the heal other was not doing any damage the all of the uh, anything above Draugr was resisting heal other uh so but victor pointed out to me oh there's this one in the tree here that actually does damage to you know undead and uh the living as well so here check that one out so i took that and it acted like poison damage um you know which makes sense it's the necro plague or whatever so you you cast it on them and then um slowly it would like droggers like okay a base level drogger would go you hit it with them and then be like Bew! that guy's dead uh up a little slightly higher level would be like <laughs> and then they would die you know but the death lords that was problematic the them you'd have to hit a few times and run away and hide and wait for them to to not be able to find you and then pop back out hit it with them again hit them again with it and i would team this up with uh, fire breath um, that shout it seemed to do some good damage to the drugger plus uh, where did I get this guys I have a 25% bonus damage did I get that from maybe Parthernax mm-hmm. okay so af- right before I killed Parthernax I gave- <laughs> he gave me a nice uh, <laughs> a nice bonus uh, uh, for yeah, my fire you breath. meditated on the word y'all y'all y- 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 that's yeah. right okay so I have my uh, 25% fire bonus damage so I would uh, I would poison them. Did, did you go to um, Solstheim? 
Souls time. Uh, yes, I did because uh, I had one uh, one purpose in mind. Uh, no, two. Sorry, I I got the the champions kudel, and I also got um, the black market. Um, what's his name? Dramora Merchant guy. Yeah, I, th- those are yeah. the two things I got. You, you, you didn't yeah, get the boar. <laughs> Sorry. You didn't get the boar. The boar. Oh, I did the boar thing. He'll follow you. You know. Uh, he did for a little while. He won't follow you. I tried. Yeah. He won't follow you off the island. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you can get him onto the boat, but he won't get on. Yeah, the boat. he stays on the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he'll he'll sit in Windhelm on the boat, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a black book that adds uh, damage to your shout as well. Mm-hmm. Your uh, your first out, your fire, and something else. Yeah, so see, that's what I was... could have been that. That's the, that was my other consideration, Colin. I was thinking, uh, was it one of the black books? But I didn't do a ton over there, so I don't know which black books I actually hit. But I know definitely it was the black market. I, I always try to get that thing just so I don't have to be constantly running into towns to sell stuff. I can just sell it to him, but... Um, so anyway, I was having lots of trouble, so I just uh, complained to you guys. You guys gave me some good advice, and I came back and was eventually able to uh, work my way through, very slowly work my way through the Skull Dolphin out the exterior. No, the exterior, I know this wasn't slow at all. The exterior, I said, fuck it. I'm putting on my Prefontaine impression and, and booking it. Let's go. <laughs> so I ran as fast as I could all the way up. And, you know, I got hit a couple times, but I was, you know, also throwing up healing at the same time as I was running as fast as I could. And I actually made it all the way up to the the, the temple doors there from your first exterior scene. And I got in, the, got in the thing and I thought, yes, I'm safe. Holy shit. Yeah, I made it. And the screen loads and standing around me are six Draugr Death Lords. <laughs> <laughs> wham 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 i'm dead and you know just a few strikes and then it just so happens it keeps reloading and i'm like okay what am i gonna do am i gonna reload it where i'm back at the bottom and run all the way up the steps again because i can make it but do i want those guys following me in the temple okay so let's try to see if we can find a way to deal with these guys as they're standing in front of me right here so with six Draugr death lords sitting, standing in front of me i I just start taking off and I book all the way up to the interior to that first puzzle room where you've got a few statues that you can flip around. And so I'm running around there and engaging all those guys. I was like, oh, wait, there's a couple of lower level droggers in here. They're not, it's not all death lords. There was like two or three death lords maybe instead of the six that I was dealing with down in the lower level of the front room. So I ran around and engaged those guys and made them chase me a little bit. I was casting um, a, a, a flame atronach to try to, you know, draw attention away from me every once in a while and everything. So that worked. And when uh, I died in there a few times, but reloaded and kept trying this, I went back down to the front level eventually. And I saw those guys leaving. I was like, Oh my God, they're leaving. They just like got bored from standing there. They wouldn't follow me deeper into the dungeon. They were just staying in that front room. And so the six guys, they turned and left and I was like, Oh sweet. So I got a save right there as they were like, right as they left. So uh, I was hidden. They were gone. So, oh, sweet. Okay, here's a safe spot. And then I was able to slowly just take everyone out one by one with the uh, the Necroplague poisoning them, hiding, poison, hide, fire, <laughs> breath, hide. <laughs> you know, it's This is very out of my realm. If you know me, I'm heavy armor, two-handed, you know, right in the face sort of stuff. So it was very different style to play this. But it was thank you so much for the suggestion of the Necroplague um, because it really did damage to the undead that were resisting my heal other that I'd been using up to that point. And if I hadn't gotten that, I was frustrated to the point where I was just going to be like, fuck it. I'm not going to fit like this character lost. The, the healers can't make it past this point. But uh, uh, thank you for the nice suggestion. And that actually made me be able to get through there. After, after you get through Excellent. the temple, though, there's one more exterior section, right? With another round of death lords and there's dragons perched up there and there's the dragon priest that one i did the same theory as before my exterior so i just ran as fast as i could and then hit that uh, platform of stairs and <laughs> did my best belly flop impression right into the realm of of uh of not what's it called not skull dolphin the um 
Sovereign Guard. Sovereign Guard, yeah. A belly yeah. flopped into Sovereign Guard and didn't even look at the Dragon Priest. He didn't even have yeah, time. Yeah, I've, I've sneaked back past him before. It's 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 possible to do. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Oh, he yeah. didn't even have time to fire a shot off. I, I was just running by everyone saying "fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> But that's yeah, how I, I got it. That was, that was fun. Yeah, I thought I was a goner. I, I really had never been to that point in this game where I was just like, I, there's literally nothing I can do. I'm not powerful enough to take on any of these enemies. I have uh, gotten myself into a pickle by increasing on one school only, and then when that one tool disappears, I literally have nothing to fight with. <laughs> so I, I, I thought I was screwed, but it was, I was glad for your guys' help, uh, Victor, in pointing that out to me. That was, that was awesome. Uh, cool. Did anybody else have anything before we get into Sovereign Guard? Yeah, should... I was just when I got up to the Dragon Priest, he was he was really low on health. Did anybody Ooh. else have that? Mm, no. Yeah, I wonder who he's I fighting. In the past, yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I remember. Some, I think it was you, Michael. I'm pretty sure. Um, we're saying previously that you got up there, and when once you got there, he was down to like a third health. I wonder if he battles. Um... When the dragons fly by, uh, when you're doing the uh, when you're battling those other dragons, I wonder if he, um, you know, comes across them in some it's way. It's possible because when when I got up there, one of the, one of the dragons that I had killed at the very beginning, the his body was there. Yeah, I mean, he may. The two up there don't attack him, but the other right. two may. Yeah. Yeah, That'd be really sure. interesting. That would make sense, though, because there's really nothing else up there that would do that kind of damage to him. Would, would Odoving have given him a kick in on his way out? Oh, that's nah. a thought. He kind of just flies off. <laughs> direction. He's like, all right, I'll see you. Hey, um, <laughs> yeah, he's got, no, he's, that's not his monkey, not his circus, right? He's, that was <laughs> that was actually. I'm glad you guys brought that up because that was one thing that I tried a couple of times when I I like I have no other options. What the fuck do I do? Oh wait! Here's Call Dragon Odaving. Will you come to my rescue and kill this <laughs> dragon in the sky? Uh, no. <laughs> now he he, right. he is like yeah. He showed up. He came back, but he didn't do anything. He just kind of flew around. Was like hey, what's up? Oh, wow. Later. <laughs> cool. Uh, so we should move on then. And Colin, why don't you go ahead and Hello, uh, Skyrim Roundtable Ray here? Oh shit! I'm sorry. <laughs> With the uh, ongoing tale wow, of right, joined us. My my bad, I bumped something there. Um, <laughs> Colin, right. why don't you? Uh, this is very professional. Uh, <laughs> Gary is fired. What do you think about that, oh, Jeremy? Man. Like nice uh, Gary thing. Uh, so I don't get into Sovngarde here. Uh, Colin, why don't you guide us into the the heavenly afterlife? Um, sorry. Yeah, I was. You get into um. Sovereign God, uh, you um, you get there, and uh, there's really good music. It kind of shifts. So you step through the portal, you get to the opposite side, and um, the sky is kind of weirdy, sort of like you know, a swirling portally type looking thing. And there's loads of mist everywhere, and you can see uh, shores hauled off in the distance over the rise because it stands really tall. And as you're walking down, um, you notice that there's this like really weird mist everywhere. So either you just walk through it or you, you can use the clear skies shout to clear it as you're walking along. And as you walk along, you come across a, um, a storm cloak soldier saying that you shouldn't go any further uh, because the mist will get you. And what should we call it? Um, uh, all, all the... Alduin, the world eater, is in there and he'll eat your soul and blah, blah, blah. And you talk to him a little bit and say that you might be able to get him to the other side if he follows you. But uh, I think it must be bugged because I've never been able to get him to the other side. He sort of like gets lost in the mist, in the mist again as you're sort of like traveling through. Yeah, poor guy. Yeah. So you're going through and then you can meet um, other warriors who have fell in battle. Um, and they are also trapped in the mist, and they can't get to Shores Hall because um, I think they call it a soul snare. I think maybe, and that's what that mist is. It's um, Alduin's soul snare. That's a uh, label outside the the halls, 
and uh, they can't get through it. So he's feeding on the souls that get that when they die, they're supposed to go to Sovereign Guard and they get there and they can't get past of it because all the wind's eating all the souls. So if, depending on what you've done in the game, uh, was I came across Codlack Whitemane mm-hmm. and I came across um, Ulfric Stormcloak and then, what's his name, Galmar. And you also, which gives us a little clue to what we are discussing last time about the timeline of when Alduin arrived. Is that you meet um, Torig, King Torig? Mm. He's inside the mist. Yeah, that's right. So Alduin must have arrived before you get to Helgen, because um, when he died is when um, what you call it? Um, I've got his name now. Um, Yard of Windhelm. What's his name? What's his fucking name. Ulfric? Ulfric. Ulfric. Yeah. Yeah. So when Ulfric killed uh, Torig, Alduin has or had already set his soul snare in Sovngarde. So he must have already come back just before Torig got killed. That's why he's trapped in the mist. But he doesn't start that until after you've defeated him at the throne of the world, presumably, correct? He doesn't go to Sovngarde until until after that. Well, no, he he got his ass kicked by the ancient Nords, so he could have gone there. So to you're saying, him. oh, okay. So you're saying that he goes to Sovngarde before he comes back to to Tamriel, or to he arrives back in Tamriel. Up. Yeah, he arrives back at Tamriel, and he's like, "What the fuck is going on?" Like, you know, I noticed that spell that Elder Scrolls done something. Uh, where's all my dragon friends? They're all fucked off. They're all dead. There's dragon mounds everywhere. <laughs> and he was like, "Well, fuck, I gotta get some power." So I'm thinking he goes back to Skull Daffin, where his no his powers mar- like you know where his last temple was, and he gets there. All his dragon priests are dead. Um, so he starts raising all his dragon priests up. He starts sort of like, you know, sending out the vibes for them to raise back <laughs> up. Yeah. And then he gets, he opens up the port, gets uh, Nacreen to open up the portal. He goes to Southern Guard to feed on the souls of the dead to gain, to get his full power back so he can come out and raise all the, the, the dead dragons. And that's where hmm. he gets the power to do that is by going to Southern Guard. So what, what is. Remind me again, what are the relationship with the dragon priests and those uh, special masks and the and Alduin? I assume the dragon priests were just caretakers of altars to uh, honor dragons, I'm assuming? Yeah. Yeah, so they were worshippers of the dragons. They saw yeah. dragons they were the as heads of the dragon them. cult. Yeah. Okay. In the first era. And, and they were the ones who oversaw what everybody below them would do. So they would have a like talk directly to um, the dragon and the dragon would goes right I want this that temple I want this this and this and then these guys would go out there and tell all the followers this is what you're going to do build that pyramid and so on and so forth and the and the form we see them now they're sort of like a floating uh, ghost what form would have they taken you know when they were alive or whatever were they just people I think so yeah okay. yeah they're just men Nord, like, what's his name wrong. on Solstheim is is one, right? Yeah, Mirak. Yeah, Mirak is one, and but, he's like still, you know, he's, he's still. But he person. was also a dragonborn. Oh, that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Would it, will he eventually float when we, when we revisit Mirak in eight hundred millennia? <laughs> well, what's his uh, Hermaeus Mora ate him, so I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> he shoved a sex tentacle up the back of his head. There we go. Um, so what? Uh, sorry, where were we in um, the fog? Did we get into the, t- yep. the into the uh, the house yet? No, no, yet. Okay. Um, so we, we we see Torig and we and they're all like, "Oh, my brain's not here," and blah blah blah. We're all gonna get eaten brain's by the worm. And then you finally <laughs> approach the Wild Bone Bridge, and you've got Sun, who is uh, standing guard at the entrance and he bids you welcome and he says he's a um house carl he says he's he's um shore's hand i mean uh, uh shield thane yeah shield thane that's what it is shield thane there we go yeah. not thane pool uh, boy um not house carl thane so yes he's yeah. shield thane to, to thor uh to thor um, um, um sorry to interrupt could someone remind me 
uh, lore wise, who Shore is. Why is Shore important? Yeah, mm. sure. I, don't, I'd say, I don't know. <laughs> it's just he had really <laughs> long braids. <laughs> <laughs> Because the, that town Shore Stone is named, I assume for sure. I just wondered why Shore yeah. was important. And, all right, never mind. Go ahead. He's basically he's essentially he's he's Lorcan. Do you, do you know who Lorcan was? Was uh, the vampire guy? No, no that's no. that's no. Lorcan. <laughs> so never anyway, mind. go ahead. Sorry, sorry, Colin. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. So he says that. Um, they were uh, somebody's dryer is going off. Uh, is... They were um, going to all run out of Shore's Hall and go give Alduin a kick in when he turned up, but Shore told him not to. That um, something's going on, and they all thought, "Oh shit, it's going to be the end of the world." He's Shore's going to let Alduin eat the world, and it's all going to be over. Uh, and then you show up, um, and then he says, "Oh, well, you're still living." And he goes, "I can't let you into the hall." Um, why? What right do you claim entry? And depending on what, again, what you've done in the game, um, if you've done nothing but the main quest, you've sort of like sped through it. You can say, by right of destiny, I'm the Dragonborn. Let me in. Um, you could say, by right of uh, warrior or by honor, uh, I'm the leader of the companions. I can't remember what it was. Uh, or you can say, by right of cleverness, I'm a member of, of the leader of the. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mages Guild, That's cool. and then there's an- another one for the Thieves Guild as well, I think. Yeah, or and and the Dark the Brotherhood. Dark Brotherhood. I assume each of them have their own. But that's cool. Yeah. I like how they did that. So wh- whatever you claim to be, wherever your character is supposed to be coming yeah. from, yeah. Um, that's what you sort of like do. So if you're like a companions guy and you've gone through the brangers, you don't use magic, that sort of stuff. Had, had you done all of the four factions, Colin? No, no, I just done t- two of them, but she wasn't really major's guildish. But she was brought in as, like you know, outsourcing by the college. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, what did your uh, answer? Did she, you? Use she was a... brought in for her speciality in restoration magic, uh, and then after she was there for a while, they showed her some, like you know, uh, master level spells. But she was there mainly as uh, sort of like a like a third party representative to come in and show them all how wards and healing magic works out in oh, dungeons, nice. real world application type stuff. It, it, it's all in her, in her journals. <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> but yeah, she is. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, yeah, it, it's well written her remit. So, uh, whatever. Um, she had companions and majors guild. But she she said companions. She went. She had dragonborn companions and mages guild. But she said companions one. Anybody else know yeah. what they chose? Um, I I uh, did the uh, um, the guild mages guild. Yeah, I think I think that's what I did too. I yeah, I, ch- I chose both because after I chose companions, he, he, he said, Fuck off. Out me back <laughs> up my ass and killed me. Uh, <laughs> I said, "Oh yeah, companion. Let's check. Let's double check I, that right now." Yeah, I, I'd forgotten. Uh, uh, yeah, how fast he comes at you. I wasn't prepared. Oh yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> he seems so, yeah, really big, tall too, right? Yeah, he's a big boy. He is. Yeah, yeah. Be glad. So after that, I did Dragonborn. And then he was just like, "Okay," he does. He bow and let you pass. No, he said, "Okay, you're still fucked." Okay, we'll still <laughs> we'll still punch you in the face. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so then you have to, um, okay, right? That get, gets you to the right to come in now. To be able to actually get in, I've got to find out if you're sort of like you know good enough to get in. And no matter what I do, as long as you beat him, you can still get in. So if you, um, like. Um, like Cleesia, she used all her buffs, so she sort of like backed off, and then as he was he chasing her around with that bloody two-handed axe he's got, she was uh, casting all her spells like King's Heart and Healing Blossom and Tree Things and all like that, and then she took out her Warhammer, and then when he cl- when when he clipped her a couple of times. It didn't hurt that much, and when it did hurt, her magic healed her back up again. So she's able to get a good few whacks in, and you only have to get them down about two thirds, I think. And then yeah, he sort of like, yeah, yeah it's just he accepts it. Yeah, yeah. 
he accepts uh, that uncle, you're uh, uncle. strong enough. Huh? No, I was just saying he screams uncle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were saying ogle. I thought you were screaming for ogle to come and help no, you. <laughs> that too. The whole damn time I was like, someone please fucking help me. Yeah. No, he's soon. He's not going to yell uncle for anybody. No, yeah. no, definitely not. Um, so you, you give him a kick in and hopefully um, he killed me once too. I uh, forgot to put all my buffs on and tried to face him head on and then realized, ah, no, that's not going to work. Um, so then I've done it again, went through it again, put all my buffs up as he was sort of like trying to like, you know, chasing after me. Yeah. And um, then gave got a few whacks in. Then you get into the hall, um, cross over the whalebone bridge and get inside the hall. And then East Cremore, the the one who started the companions who sort of like brought all the companions over it was the 500 companions wasn't it mm-hmm. yeah, yeah 500. and um he bids you welcome to the hall and he says that the three great heroes are here waiting for you to sort of like you know like you know initiate the time to go and kill alduin they've all been awaiting return but you can saunter around and there's just a few special guests in there one of them who i like was olaf one eye Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Was in there, oh, yeah, and if you yeah. uh, if you talk to him, he says, um, and he goes, um, "I'm glad you helped old Salak Nier out." And he goes, um, "He, I might have not liked his poem, but you know, he did fight me like an honourable man. And but he's trapped in the mist. Uh, hopefully, once you get this Alduin business sorted out, I'll be able to meet him and greet him as a friend." So you know when you go and do the the bard scholars quest, when you go in there and you go down and you get the poem and you bring it back to Olaf and Salaknir fights Olaf, yeah. that's you releasing his spirit, and he gets to go to Sovngarde. That's awesome. Oh, that's... Yeah, I never realized that before. Yeah, I never come across that. That's very yeah. cool. Uh, who else is up there? Um, Jurgen Windcaller is up there in his stupid robes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of cool characters. I didn't, I didn't check them out this time. Uh, there's a few of them on there that are just got Nord hero, and they're not all wearing like big Nord heavy armor. Uh, there's some that I might wear. There's a couple of them who are walking around with, um, what is it, um, arch mage robes from the Winter of College, the College of Winterhold, which I thought was pretty cool. Hmm. That's a little odd, but. Yeah. That doesn't mean well. Just because they're magic users doesn't mean that they're they weren't Nord heroes and they, they don't belong in in Southern Get No, out. no, I didn't say that. I just it's just the Nords, you know, aren't well known for their magic. Um, Nowadays, but, yeah. <laughs> I I do have to say how profoundly with the first time I went to to Sovngarde, how profoundly disappointed I was that Isgrimor, this great hero, mm. this wonderful, amazing character, uh, was voiced by the guy with the bad Nordic accent. Uh, <laughs> it's really annoying. What, I, the the I know it's, it's guy? trivial, but uh, but what's that? I said it wasn't the Farangar guy. At least was it? No, not the Farangar oh, guy. Thank, thank God. Goodness. No, thank it's Algrif's brother. <laughs> Uh, it should have been Balgroof, the guy who did Balgroof or yeah, something. Yeah, Balgroof is good. good. <laughs> yeah, he's a good voice actor. Um, but yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask what um, what other references to Eskrimor do we run across in the game up before we get to that point? There's Eskrimor's tomb. I remember we run into at some point. Well, there's In- Ingol and the Sea Ghosts. That that uh, that really nice little uh, interlude there. Um, it's a, one of the books. Um, okay, yeah, and of course, you know, all of the companions, the companion stuff. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Um, when does that quest end? Uh, were there other people to talk to, Colin, around the, the the party there? Yeah, you couldn't talk to them like you know back and forth. Yeah, you could click on them and then they'd have some stock they'd lines, have a that. canned response. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And there's, there's actually one or two names there that I didn't recognize. Oh, interesting. And 
was there anything fun or special to do interact with could you open you couldn't open any chests or get a there's no special weapon or no skill books or anything that I found no she, and, no, she did take a, a sweet roll to give to Lydia oh, when she got paid. sweet roll very nice there's and the, an apple pie yeah <laughs> but there's the, what on his legs or something like that is the uh special food there, and that's about it. Special food. Yeah, there yeah, is an then... ox leg. That you can, well, you can pick it up, but it doesn't actually count as food. Oh, no. It goes into your miscellaneous section. Uh, or, or yeah. in inventory, you can't actually eat it. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, anybody have any uh, other thoughts on uh, Sovngarde before we uh, step outside to our final quest for the season? Well, you do talk to the three heroes. Oh, you haven't done that yet. Go talk to them. <laughs> hey, you're not bossing me. <laughs> uh, what are their names? These are the same. We're re- revisiting uh, the same heroes from the time rift that we saw atop uh, the throat of the world. Correct? Yeah, right. that's right. Gormleith and uh, Eldia, the old. <laughs> yeah, I can't when did they put that, that label thing? on there. I didn't remember that label before. <laughs> the yeah, old, I mean, the old and feeble. <laughs> did he get that? Yeah, did he get that at school? I mean, you know, was he like, you know, everybody's birthday was, like, you know, <laughs> in January, and yeah. his was sort of like, you know, the year before. Dude, he's the only, <laughs> he was like the tallest in school, so all the kids just called him Feldy the Old. <laughs> that because he was 12. He was held back a couple of years. <laughs> uh, what happens with your interaction with them, Colin? Do they say anything special, or is it just sort of like some uh, go go rah rah rhetoric? Yeah, well, the, the Gormleith is all go go. Let's like get out there and start chopping heads, um, or a head, and um, one, one in particular. Yeah, uh, was it Feldir? Is like, well, let's let's discuss this and sort of like you know make sure we go out there with a battle plan instead of like just running in there like a bunch of idiots. So they're talking about it, and then they say, we're going to have to clear the mist, and if we combine our, our all our shouts of clear skies to be able to get rid of the mist, um, that will remove uh, Alduin's um, soul snare, so he will know... Well, I, I'm only inferring here. Uh, so they'll remove his soul snare, so he will no, no longer be able to feed on the souls of the dead, so he won't be able to regain his powers. So... Um, us getting rid of the things will definitely call him out to a fight. He'll have to get rid of us so he'll be able to set the soul snare again. So that's what I'm fearing. They don't go that in deep with that in depth with it, but um, that's mm-hmm. the plan anyway. So you run outside, yeah, and then that starts uh, the next quest. I think. Great. Um, again, I, I tried to interact with stuff on the besides stuff on the table. That was all I. You can there there weren't any special. Tra- Skyrim usually uh, rewards you for like snooping around stuff. I always hope that they would plant something in that building, something fun, a little ring somewhere or something. It's too bad. Yeah, I always look around. I wish it was something you could find in uh, Sovngarde. Yeah. yeah, there's not much. Um, actually, there's a wall. There's a word wall that I approach and I was like, holy shit, is there a word wall here that uh, uh, just I missed before and I get this awesome word in Sovngarde and, and I got my hopes all up. I was like, sweet, here we go. Let's go absorb the... Oh, shit. The wall's yeah, all it's, crumbled. It's, rock in front of it. yeah. it's crumbled and broken and it's falling. Oh, yeah. I don't get anything from here. That sucks. No. All right, so let's go outside and uh, let's go dragon slaying, fellas. Totally. Victor, would you like to tell us about your adventure outdoors? Oh sure. Well, uh, once you gather the three the three heroes, uh, y'all run out and dash across the bridge, um, and you get out there on the on the field of battle and uh, uh, gather your your voices. Uh, and you, as the as the dragonborn, have to shout first, and then they shout. Uh, you all shout clear skies to clear the mist, um, and once and twice and three times and. Eventually, as you weaken Alduin uh, slowly, uh, the last shout clears the mist completely, um, and he appears. And then, of course, uh, you know, 
dragon rand is is what you need uh obviously and uh and then it's just a, a pretty prolonged and uh good battle um you know i i used a lot of you know once you get him down uh if you can stay close enough uh you just keep shouting dragon rend and keep him on the ground and and uh and just whittle away at it and for once i mean the your your npcs do damage i mean they everybody seems i don't know if this is true or not but everybody seems somewhat equal in the fight um i think uh and uh i actually even had my little hern running around (laughs) out there kept getting zapped and I'd reconjure them and zap and reconjure. <laughs> go, but, buddy, um, go. <laughs> but uh, um, it's it's a pretty good fight. Uh, lots of, lots of bound bound arrows. Yeah, there's a. Uh, it's the typical Alduin. Like before, he brings the like the little asteroids, the flaming rocks from above, the the, Arma- right, yeah. the Armageddon spell, basically, or the Armageddon yep. show. Um, so that's I kept getting pelted by those damn things, and I love that the recycle period for the shout time of Dragon Rend is exactly the same amount of time as it takes for this thing to wear off. So he can never take off if you just if as you soon as, as if, if it's as soon as it wears off, you hit him again immediately. He can't take off the ground. I mean, he'll he'll hover a little bit, like he'll pretend to start going the next round, but he'll he'll never get off the ground if you keep hitting him like that. And having the three um, um, Nord champions or heroes or whatever those guys are called, it was it was like a little slice of pie, guys. It was like taking me back home to to the way I used to fight back uh, back in the back in normal Skyrim on the real world. Uh, but I just basically kept blasting him and. And the timing is perfect. If you keep him on the ground, I was uh, I was tossing my little poison spell, my necro plague, at him, but I could not tell if that was actually having an effect on him or not because his his health was draining pretty, you know, at a slow but steady rate as the three champions were up in his face doing their damage, and I was I was you know forty fifty yards yeah. away doing my normal sort of like healing attacks. You know, not not healing, but uh, you know, just keeping him on the ground is basically all I was doing with the dragon rend. Colin, were you about to say something there? Yeah, well, in my fight, I um always like to uh, bring um Durnavir on. So oh, once I got that's Alduin really smart. down low enough. Yeah, saw so him in your um, video. I was I was just actually over there while looking at him. Yeah. Um, so once I got Alduin low enough that he couldn't take off anymore, I switched from Dragon Rend to Summon, summon Durnavir, and um, I kind of put in a good word, word with him with Sun. Maybe they can do something, you know, with the <laughs> ideal, ma- ideal masters, you know, sort of like, you know, give them a bit of a kick and say, like, this guy's all right. He helped us with the world eater, you know, sort of like, you know, let's free him from the soul care. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, he helped me out in the battle and sort of like, you know, and, and got That's all really his smart. Um, there's a little sh- sh- shout or scream right at the very start of the film where somebody screams Alduin something, something. And I don't know whether it's Alduin himself screaming it, saying like, I'm Alduin, you can't kill me. Or it's actually Durnavir screaming it, uh, Alduin, blah, blah, blah. As in he knows who he's attacking and he's sort of like, you know, huh. calling him out. Hmm. That'd be cool. Yeah, I was hoping it would be that. That's like, really calling him out. That's really smart to bring out Durnavir. Uh, can you, as a, if if you have the multiple um, summoned items at once, per can you summon? Uh, can you do the call dragon shout and summon Durnavir at the same time, or are there loops too long where you can't do two shouts and have them out at the same time? Yeah, you gotta have them out because they're both like three hundred, three hundred seconds, seconds or whatever. Cycles. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. So by the time. That they shout words off. Um, Durnavir is just about about he's, to head he's back. He's flying away. <laughs> yeah, and then you do the call dragon shout, and then it takes uh, Odovinger a little bit to get to you to show up. Yeah, mm-hmm. fun. Hey, uh, so uh, what else, Colin? What, uh, tell me a little bit about your 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 Alduin, your Alduin battle. Yeah. That was pretty much it. I sort of like buffed her up again, sort of like uh, using healing blossom and king's heart to keep her healed up yeah but um 
was that he was using like three different shouts. He was using the apocalypse shout, um, frost shout, and fire shout. She's she's got a good fire resistance going, um, but she's a little low on frost resistance with the way her enchanting because you can't put magic resistance on yeah. it, something on boots. I think because she has magic resistance instead of like a certain elemental resistance. Um, and she can't put that on boots, which was really annoying. Oh no! Yeah. So she's yeah. so she's a little susceptible to frost magic, and uh, once he used the frost spell, she, he nearly killed her. I, but um, I assume Alduin's does all three types of damage. What 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 sort of damage does Alduin's actually do? Well, you're, um, I don't know. I don't understand the question. Like his fire breath, you yeah, have there's frost dragons, there's fire dragons. Uh, what sort of breath damage does does Alduin actually do? He does a fire breath and frost breath. And frost breath. Is there elect? There's no electrical dragon, is there? No. Honestly, if you get awesome. the um, uh, I've got to go on. Uh, um, there's a mod for dragons. Yeah, on PC it brings out a, a a shock dragon. Yes, it does. Oh, that's pretty cool. I have to look into that. Uh, let's uh, adventure on with uh, Pat. Could you uh, pipe in a little bit about your Alduin adventure or anything in the in the castle? Remarkable happened before you came. No, out I think to I think to, you guys hit, 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 hit on everything for me. Um, you know, I was playing on uh, just the depth, so you know the battle was probably a little easier for me than it was for you guys playing on tougher levels. Um, I, I saw I saw Codlac and. I forget who I saw. I saw a couple of the the, the, the people that are in you know in, in Samagar, but you know, nothing you know, nothing notable that you guys didn't already hit on. So, um, uh, you know, pretty yeah. You know, for for me, it was it was it was. I think I mentioned it actually maybe in the last show. Is that uh, it was almost not not exactly in the climactic, but it was it was it was very short compared to like you know, the the, the uh, Soldathan fight and everything else. It, yeah, it, or it was, the uh, the I almost called him the Dark Knight. What what's the uh... <laughs> what's the uh the black what's he fucking called i just totally blanked on his name the ebony warrior, ebony warrior. The ebony warrior. there you go yeah that's more of a uh an epic battle for for an end end boss than, yeah, than yeah, Alduin yeah. turns out to be yeah. well that and actually i wonder that would actually be it would actually be really good for the ebony warrior to be in sovereign guard if you happen to do them first, although that's oh, you know, that'd be I, I fun. Know, that, that, I wonder, that's interesting to think about because uh, like, hey, bro, yeah. we've got unfinished business. Because that's basically <laughs> he's, he basically is getting you to release him to go to the Sovereign Guard. That, that's his whole deal. Uh, and you, it's pretty weird. For you a helped him. Yeah, I was going to say he's not really a Nord. Yeah, yeah that's true. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I mean, hey, I. So, like, uh, Kalicia wants to go to Sovereign Guard, because that's where um, Lydia is going. So, <laughs> Kalicia's like, "Yep, no, yeah, I'm going with her." No, no, I'm tagging right. along, tagging along. Yeah. Uh, Michael, did you have any fun adventures with Alduin there at the end? Um, I did some of the uh, runes, but they didn't do all that much damage to him. So, I, I kept him on the ground as best I could and shot fireballs at him. Oh no no no! I used ice spikes. I found they worked better actually. I was going to ask uh, if he if Alduin has a particular resistance, fire or frost or anything. I assume maybe one or the other or both. I didn't know. Yeah, I'm not positive, but I found the they were. It just happened to be working perhaps better for me, so I I went with that. But um, yeah, I I made sure I kept them on the ground as best I could because uh, I was I think I was playing on legendary at that point, so um, it wasn't. Oh wow! But um, I was, you know, leveled up high enough where it wasn't terrible either. Was um, was it particularly cold? Would it was were you affected by your mod? No, not no. in Sovngarde, really. Was it cozy and warm in heaven? Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was there. That's great. Um, anything in the castle? Nothing uh, with the. You, you said you, you, you grabbed some ox leg or something, yeah, whatever, the, whatever grab, the fuck that's called. Yeah, because there's none anywhere else. So I'm like, oh, I'll just grab. Yeah. And I always grab one and just keep it. I don't 
That's fun. You put it on a display back in your home. Yeah, world. I stick it in a chest and, it's, <laughs> and then forget about it. Of course. Yeah, yeah. And one then of the and one of the many it. homes, many many. Yes, homes. It's, uh, the kids play with it when they yeah. come over. <laughs> when they come out from uh, Markarth, <laughs> when I see them every five years. <laughs> I see you. Yeah, I'm a good father. Father of the year. <laughs> I don't spend much time in uh, Sovngarde anymore. Like I, like I used to really try and explore it, but there's nothing yeah, really there to it's, find. It's, it's amazing how Skyrim is so good. If you go into any dungeon or any mountainous area, they the game really does reward you for looking into nooks and crannies. Like the whole game, it's teaching you. Yes, take a peek around here. There will be a little bag of gold. Yes, take a look over here. There will be a ring of something or other. Yes, take a look behind this waterfall. You might find a chest. And then you get to Sovngarde, the the pinnacle of the game. There, It should just be filled with little Easter eggs and fun little things here and there, hidden treasures. Everything should be everywhere. But you, there's fucking nothing. In oh, there is a crap load of blue mountain flowers. Yeah. Oh, so, there is that. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's blue I, mountain I flowers. It don't jump off the whalebone bridge. You, you die yeah. yeah, yeah, that doesn't go up. Well. Hey. Yeah, and I can also I can also attest to the fact that you can die from jumping off a cliff in Southern Guard as well. Nice. <laughs> um, I try to run past soon, um, and not accept his fist fight challenge. And uh, I got blasted by a bolt of lightning as I was running about three quarters of the way across the whale bridge, and I was I was assuming, and you know, of course, I died instantaneously, but. I mean, I was assuming that was the uh, the Lord saying that no, no, the wrath not, of shore. not quite yet. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? <laughs> yeah, so I had to I had to go back and, and take another fight. Uh, anybody else got any uh, final thoughts on the final Alduin battle? Uh, yeah, just a summary. I I just kind of held them to the ground with uh, Dragonrend and let the champions do their business. Let them get their. Um, what is, what is their relationship here with they they had the time rift right uh they sent uh Alduin to the future basically now to the time that they're in uh waiting for me to show up uh we have shown up here uh they have the the dragonborn to help them this is all they're waiting for they just needed a fourth voice to shout to clear out the valley to take down Alduin no, I think no I think they needed a dragonborn they needed a dragon something board. about yeah. something about you will, will help kill Alduin. They they were waiting for you. It's for some reason. I mean, you don't absorb a soul, but I think because you are dragonborn and you're there and you help in the killing, that's what really sort of like you know okay. takes them out. I nice. think. I think that's what the threat. Either that, or they were just like you know. Because he's gone forward in time, so they can't go after him until he finally arrives. But when he does arrive and set his soul snare there, they're told by Shore to wait to stay their hand until something else until... happens. So obviously they're waiting for you. Until the cavalry arrives. Mm-hmm. Nice. And here we come on horseback. <laughs> Great. Uh, any final thoughts, anyone, on our on our last battle here, Dragon Slayer? Mm. You, you get. Uh, the shout, don't you? Uh, Call of Valor, I believe. Oh yes, yes, that's right. Uh, can anyone describe Call of Valor? You get it's kind of like a bluish, greenish hue. <laughs> no. no. Uh, if I if I. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know. Uh, I, is that is that a game? I'm showing my ignorance here. Um, you said describe it. I was kind of was kind of bluish green. The the <laughs> shout itself. Yeah. Um. So it uh, brings um. What it brings the 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 champions one. back, right? Uh, I, I believe one shout or one word of the shout brings one of them. If you shout two words, it brings the second one. If you shout all three words, it brings all three or the third person out. You can't bring all three of them out at once, which would be cool. But it's depending on how many words you shout brings up. A different champion? Is that how that works? Uh, yeah, one, you get one of the three depending on how long you hold it. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you use the full shout and then one of the three will show up. Yeah. 
No, oh, I thought I misunderstood then. I read it as if you use the first word, this one will show up. If you use the second, the first and second word, the that one will show up. If you use all three, then the third one. Okay, I misunderstood. But it would be nice if all three of them uh, showed up. I mean, up. actually, yeah, I, I'd never tried it, but I, I don't think that's how it goes. Okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm totally open to that. Um, so what happens at the end of the at the end of Skyrim? Like it, some people debate uh, whether you can beat Skyrim. People, oh, I beat that game. Oh no, it, there is no end to this game, which is nice. Uh, evidently, in uh, was it Fallout New Vegas, the the game used to end, but then they added a DLC that would cause the game to keep continuing. But it it was evidently a big deal uh, in Skyrim that after you finish the game. You can just keep right on going on. What happens after you after you defeat Alduin? I'm I'm summoned right back to the top of the throat of the world. Yes, you yeah. yeah. Soon sends you back, and and you there's a bunch of dragons there, and uh, uh, they say a bunch of stuff in dragon lingo, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, which they don't translate, which is interesting. Uh, usually yeah. it's translated but that's not and then and then Parth- parthenax speaks to you um, um even if he's dead well, he might if he were yeah well yes of course if if he's still <laughs> alive he speaks to you um, maybe oda ving or someone else who you haven't killed yet yeah well uh, once if if uh if parthenax is alive he, he talks to you and tells you how he's going to uh he he makes a rather ominous statement. I can't remember exactly the wording about how he's going to show the rest of the dragons his thulum, um, which makes you wonder whether you sh- should have spared him after all. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, uh, and then and then Odaving comes along and lands on top of the throat of the world and makes some disparaging comment about Parthenax, <laughs> uh, and then tells you you can call him. You can call him shit anytime you want. Life. Uh, and if he can, he'll show up. Yeah, Parthenax yeah. also does make another statement as well. He says, like, when you talk to him, like, you know, you say to him, oh, I've killed Alduin, and he goes, and, and then um, Parthenax uh, says, um, like, oh, yeah, I mean, like, the one who came first and blah, 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 he was this and he was that, is now no longer a part of the world. And, and right. your response is, oh, you don't seem to that um, uh, that happy about it. And his response was like, well, no, I mean, I called him brother once. And, and of course, I knew he was he was talking about figuratively his brother, not yeah. to, literally his brother. Yeah, but, yeah no, that's a good speech, actually. I, I, um, but uh, is, is yeah, Parthenax it, it, voiced by someone famous? Yes, actually, he is relatively famous in the voiceover world. Mm hmm. He's done quite a few big uh, things. Can't remember his name. Yeah, but he's he's a uh, is he Luigi or Mario? I forget. He's one of them. Oh wow! Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, he yeah he's done Nintendo a lot of Nintendo work. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Do you pick up tidbits really like this it. listening to other Skyrim shows, everyone? <laughs> I don't know. Prob- I don't prob- know. Prob- but he's done a ton prob- of other stuff, you, and, you he, and by yeah. by far uh, in Skyrim, he nails oh yeah uh, reading the dragon tongue i mean it's like a, a order of magnitude better than anybody else who reads reads for that in in any of the voice acting he's he just like totally nails it he takes it seriously in other words yeah it's it's very nice i've always enjoyed um just listening to parthenax speak yeah yeah does he do uh who does um Dernavir? does he doesn't do him too does he the voices are very it's, similar. It's been so it's long. Too, been too long. It's yeah, been I so can't long. remember. Can't place Darnavir's voice. It's very regal, like uh, like Parthenax. Is there a sissy dragon out there? With who's, who's the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the what's the first one? Uh, oh. uh, Mermelnir? Yeah. Mermelnir. Yeah. yeah. If, any, if there's a sissy dragon, that's got to be the one. Yeah. Uh. Odovin kind of whines as he's getting his scales ripped off by. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. He's just getting the, that that rectal Although probe. justifiably, I guess. Yeah. In uncomfortable places. Uh, yes. hey, get out there! Get out from behind me! <laughs> so, any final thoughts for the season, guys? Overarching theories? Any um, just 
what, what have no, we gained? I, mean, I, I went down, I, I wended my way down the mountain to, just to talk to Arngear again. He's got a few things to say about, uh, about mm-hmm. oh, know, I didn't even, I didn't do that. Argument. Yeah, what is, what is Arngear does Arngear do? Nothing much. I mean, he just comments on it. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I, I, I walked, <laughs> I, I ran down the mountain and did the clear skies thing and, and, uh, uh-huh. and got down, I passed a troll on my way. Right? Oh, hey, troll. So, so I, I run into uh, High Hrothgar and I'm still hearing the battle music and I'm still seeing this red dot on my compass and I'm like, what the heck's that? And I, I'm running around inside looking for the, looking for the, uh, uh, the, the gray beards and I turn a corner and there's a freaking troll. The oh, troll followed you outside. Oh, uh, that's so fun. It killed me. <laughs> it was like one you swipe. Died? Yeah, he came inside with me. Wow. That, yeah, I'm very like impressed. Really See, I, I was, I was not expecting that. I was also surprised that earlier when the 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 Draugr Death Lords followed me inside of the Skuldalfin Temple. I don't right, think that like I don't think that they into used a, to into like an into an action or whatever. They'll that they, you can drag. It happened to me once in like Frost Fruit Inn or something like that with a bear. I think I was fighting a oh, bear and I ran great. inside. The bear came in with me. No, that's awesome. That's really yeah. fun. I don't. I mean, I could be very wrong about this, but I don't think in the vanilla pre-special edition game that they would follow me in. I feel like I'd use that tactic very many times in battle to avoid um, getting attacked by things. I think that the special edition may have added... No, no, no? this is the bear thing that happened to me a long oh, time did ago. did it? Okay, okay, shoot. Yeah. Because I remember using that battle tactic a lot, like just ducking into a load screen. I guess it depends on what the load screen is or what yeah, kind of battle must have, you're must in. have. Yeah. All right, guys, so let's do it. Final thoughts. Yeah, I had a great time. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. Pat, this was your first Skyrim adventure, um, closing yeah, it down. Well, it was, yeah, I appreciate you letting me uh, join in as the newbie. It was, uh, Andrew, thanks for organizing. Really great, great fun. I thought it was uh, really nice. Uh, oh, you're most great. welcome. I enjoy yeah. having you uh, this unnecessary... Uh, showering of of BS here. So, um, uh, thanks thanks for coming on, Pat. Of course, it was nice having you. Uh, do you have any just open thoughts about Skyrim in general? No, no. Obviously, yeah, I think we took, covered a lot over the course of the uh, the season. A lot. Just to, obviously, a terrific game, very well deserving the praise. And you know, I think Victor covered a few of the you know kind of uh, maybe less than ideal aspects of, of of SE, but at the same time, there's a lot of positives like in terms of the stability of the engine and. You know, the load screens are fast and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's a very, very worthy game. And you clearly see why uh, you know, people are still playing it, you know, six years on almost yeah. from uh, the Yeah, yeah. It's, you know. um, also, we'll uh, we'll get some thoughts from Ray here real quick before we sign off. Uh, but then I'll, I'll check back in with you guys if you have any um, just final thoughts about Skyrim Special Edition um, before we say goodbye for the season. Uh, but let's check in with Ray here for just a couple minutes. Hello, Skyrim Roundtable. Ray here with the uh, ongoing tale of Sirdolf Stormorn. So uh, this is a somewhat abbreviated set of quests because Sirdolf has already completed the Civil War and is unable to do the season end ending and uh, jumped into the uh, World Eater's Irie quest without realizing... He couldn't go back, and so had not completed the uh, the Parthenax quest. Plus, just a little uneasy kill in the old guy. It's been so helpful. So, uh, Alduin's Bane and the Fallen. Returning to the Time Wound with the Elder Scroll, Siridolf sees the ancient Nords send Alduin ahead in time, and learns the Dragonren shout. Alduin comes back uh, to defeat the Dragonborn, uh, but the hardest part of this fight is actually hitting Alduin with the shout to bring him down. Uh, once on the ground, the ebony blade and volundrum in Lydia's hands, combined with Parthenax's fire, are enough to beat Alduin in about four rounds. The battle isn't complete. Alduin is not dead. Uh, he flies off, and so Sirdolf talks to Parthenax to see uh, what had happened. Parthenax suggests that we need to capture and interrogate one of Alduin's allies. To do this, we need to convince Jarl Greymane to let us trap a dragon in Dragon's Reach. It takes a lot of convincing, but he finally comes around. 
now how to actually do it. Sirdolf decides to see if Esbern has any ideas on the subject. A cart ride to Markarth and a quick walk up to the Skyhaven Temple. Esbern tells Sirdolf that in order to continue receiving help from the Blades, he must kill Parthenax. He does give him the name of, the, of a dragon associated with Alduin, uh, but says that Sirdolf is not welcome again until his duties are fulfilled. This is not what is most important to him at the time. Alduin's defeat is his primary concern. Back to White Run to make preparations. Out on the balcony, a call to the dragon. Uh, dragon Wren gets him to the ground. Sirdolf and Lydia beat him into submission, but what? Trying to back into the trap, the dragon cooks him. Time for a new plan. Instead of defeating Odovin, <laughs> Sirdolf called, then used Dragon Wren to make him land on the terrace. From there, he runs through the trap, and the dragon chases him and is trapped. Accepting his fate and acknowledging Dragonborn's power and cunning, he gives Sirdolf the information on how to find Alduin. The dragon does have one bargaining chip. He tells us that flying is the only way to reach Skulduffin, and that if he is freed, he will fly him there. So ends the Fallen. So currently, Sirdolf's level 34, and uh, is sporting the, uh, the Ebony Blade, and is now uh, in uh, Skulduffin, not realizing that he couldn't get back to uh, to complete any other quests, so it is um, a tale for another time. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much. Yes. Thanks, Ray, for submitting. Did he say he's stuck in Skull Dolphin? That just well, means, that just means he needs to keep going a little bit there. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, sorry, Ray, don't listen. Uh, spoiler warning, uh, don't listen to this episode, Ray. Uh, <laughs> if, <laughs> if you still, if you forget don't know everything you just heard. But forget <laughs> forget all that stuff. You, um, rewind, rewind, of any race. Okay, guys, uh, any final thoughts here uh, as we sign off for uh, this uh, final episode of the season of the Skyrim yeah, Roundtable? It's wonderful, as yeah. always. Good times, absolutely. Great. I'd like to especially thank all of the uh, guys here in the room who stuck with us throughout the entire season. Uh, Colin, thank you. Michael, thank you. Pat, uh, Victor, of course. We started out with Jeremy and Juan. Uh, Those guys have always been good, hearty participants. So thanks, everyone, for uh, being a part of it. We we really couldn't do uh, the show without you guys. Uh, Thanks for hopping on and helping me out with that. Also, very important our play along people who send an audio feedback all the stories that's really the whole uh, purpose of the the Skyrim round table that's why we started doing this project in the first place was just to uh, share everyone's stories um, so without the community aspect it, this project really wouldn't be nearly as effective as it has become so uh, thank you everyone out there who've been sending in all your stories onto the Facebook page, all your emails into Michael, um, all your audio feedback, all of that stuff. It's, it's, it's very, very appreciated. So thanks everyone for doing, uh, all of, all of your hard work out there. Uh, we know it does take time and everything and we appreciate all the, um, the interactions. That's great. So thanks everyone out there. Michael, do you have any, uh, last sort of, uh, show business you'd like to get into uh if you're going to send feedback for the final well really at any point you could send feedback for the round table stuff you don't have to be uh specifically in time but if you want to be in time with this one uh will be it will be some either the second week or third week no it'll be <laughs> it'll have to be the second week of april or sometime in may because i won't be around so uh, figure uh, <laughs> by April 8th or something like that if you're sending in feedback for the roundtable. Oh, great. Yeah. Again, thanks everyone for your roundtable participation, play along stuff. Get it in. We'd love to hear it. Uh, I'd like to say a special thanks to uh, Marcus uh, for creating oh, yeah. the, um, uh, the 
the machine thing. The amazing thing. The generator, <laughs> yes. The amazing magical spreadsheet. And that's yes. not really just for the round table. I mean, you if you want to start a character and you want to try something different, head over yeah. and the for either Fallout or Skyrim, head over and use the character generators at uh uh, well, I guess one, it's at asapodcasting.com, and then you can either click on the Skyrimatic page or the Fallout feed page and yeah. find character generators on those. And you don't uh, just have to use it to produce a random character. You can get character ideas by just yeah. clicking refresh and seeing, like, okay, this is what that build would look like. What would I do in that case? Okay, let's refresh it a couple times. This Okay, let's take different aspects of different roles I'm getting here and build a really cool sort of weird character that I wouldn't normally build. So that's another effective tool. And, uh, again, thank you so much, Marcus. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, Colin. That's cool. Yeah, and uh, the uh, the other spreadsheet is about to get a workout with the uh, Fallout Roundtable. Season three, uh, yeah. starting very, very soon here. Uh, thanks for uh, pointing that out. Uh, if you are interested in the Fallout series, we also do a Fallout Roundtable, and that is starting up, the th- as Pat said, the third season of the Fallout Roundtable is starting up in just a couple of weeks. So if you're interested in that, run over to asapodcasting.com, click on the Fallout uh, section the Fallout feed section, and uh, you can get yourself a random character, find further information, the schedule of the show, everything we're doing there. And uh, tell your friends, and we love uh, community participation. Um, that's all I've got. Anybody have anything else? That's it for me. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank thanks you. So thanks for listening, everybody. For Colin, yeah, for, for Colin, Michael, Pat, Victor, I am Andrew. I'd like to thank everyone for listening to the Skyrim Roundtable for this season. And uh, I'm sure we'll uh, come back real soon and see everyone for another season in the uh, the not-too-distant future. So until next time, uh, no lollygagging. <laughs> <laughs> Later, guys. Who is rapping? Overkeen. Dragons are not overkeen. I'll dice them like a knife slicing right through an Thank you for downloading this episode of a Skyrimatic Podcast Roundtable. If you are interested in doing a play long character with us, the show can be contacted by emailing skyrimroundtable at gmail.com. For the Skyrim Random Stats Character Generator, the roundtable <laughs> schedule, our Amazon link, and all other show information, please head on over to asapodcasting.com, where you will find the Fallout feed, My Journey with CF, a Skyrimatic podcast, The Chatterbox, ASA Game Talk, our YouTube channel, as well as other content. Your five-star review on iTunes is greatly appreciated. Once again, thank you for downloading, and no lollygagging. <laughs> Random stats generator. You can, you can hear. You can hear. You can it. hear it just through her eyes, <laughs> rolling to the back of her head. You can hear it come out in her voice. Wait a minute. What? What the hell is an homunculari? So you've heard us talk about cystic fibrosis, and you want to know a little bit more about it. Well, why don't you head on over to asapodcasting.com dot com. Click on the My Journey with the Cystic Fibrosis link and give our shows a listen. You can hear Andrew and myself and his wife, Tori, talking about cystic fibrosis. You can hear a typical CF appointment with with their son and get a little more information. That, again, is asapodcasting.com, My Journey with Cystic Fibrosis.